All right, guys, it's Shalon. And if you remember last time I put out a video, I said I was going to do a follow up video. I was going to be talking about blocking and I was going to talk about can uh, active and passive blocking exist in ashes. Now, in the video down below, we see that uh, Intrepid has done active blocking. Uh, some people have looked at the numbers and they've said, oh, it looks like active blocking is doing about 50% damage reduction. Uh, I don't want to start, you know, dissecting what they showed us. It was there to show a direction. It wasn't there to be a content test. But uh, it does bring us back to the point of can active and passive blocking ex exist in Ashes of Creation? And uh, so absolutely, if you were to do blocking, what you would have is you would have active blocking. And this would be when you hit your right mouse button, you would go into a block stance. But you could also keep passive blocking and you would have an RNG uh, percentage chance to block incoming attacks. Now, I know some people have said if they do one, they shouldn't do the other. I don't see a problem with doing both. Let's talk about why. So what we're going to have is we're going to have active blocking. Uh, when you go into that active blocking stance, you would block 100% of the incoming damage from the front. Uh, so this would be you. Uh, anything on your 179.9 frontal radial, you would block 100% of that damage coming in. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit more complicated, a little bit more advanced, uh, what you could do is you could make it so that there were two separate areas, um, the front and then the flanks. Uh, in the frontal arc, you would block 100% of the incoming damage. Along those flanks, you would block 80% or 60, wherever you felt it necessary to balance. And then, of course, uh, from behind, you wouldn't be able to block. This would allow you to continue advancing this forward. You could actually force people from just staying in the active block stance by extra damage uh, being applied when attacked from behind. So if you're there in your active block stance and you're not paying attention, uh, then you could have a 100% damage increase uh, attacked from behind while you have the shield up. These are all just sort of spitball ideas. Make sure to go ahead and leave a comment below on anything during the video if you want to leave feedback. Uh, next up, the question was asked, how would you stop people from uh, just being in a permanent shield stance, just keeping it up all the time? Well, number one, as soon as you go into the shield stance, you trigger a cooldown. So you put the shield up and then you won't be able to bring the shield up right away. Uh, five to 15 seconds before you can go back into it. Uh, this, of course, uh, we're not trying to exactly solve the problem. We're just trying to put the rough cuts up there. Um, the shield type should also have a set amount of hit points, so a, uh, a round shield would have maybe a thousand, a, um, a kite shield 2500, and a tower shield 5000. Uh, once those hit points are depleted, you are forced to drop the shield. At that point, you would trigger the cooldown. You wouldn't be able to bring the uh, shield back up for whatever that cooldown is, but then we have another mechanic that stops you know, a little bit of this. What we're going to have is we're going to have a shield hit point regen. So what this is, is the shield hit point would be independent of the tank stance cooldown. Uh, if you manually drop the shield before it's depleted, the shield would recharge at a standard rate. If you were to keep the shield up and the shield gets depleted uh, before you drop it, then you would have the shield recharged at a penalized rate, including the shield would have to recharge any over damage. We'll get to that in a second. And then uh, this makes it possible to bring a shield back up that isn't 100% if you wanted to go that way. Um, otherwise, um, you could say you can't bring the shield up until the cooldown is off and the shield is regened, or you'd be able to go into the shield stance with the shield not at 100% hit points, making it easier uh, to subsequently knock the tank back out of shield stance. Of course, if we were going to do shields in this way, we would want to have uh, weapons uh, like axes and maybe some other weapons that do more damage to shields. Uh, this would be uh, stats that do more damage to the shield itself. It forces the tank out of shield stance. It changes both players' play styles. Tanks that find themselves being confronted by a lot of people with axes now suddenly have to, you know, pivot and change their play style. Otherwise, their preferred method of tanking is less effective. Uh, you could also balance that uh, with the weapon's damage accordingly. The axe would do more damage to shields, but less damage to armor, making it a situational weapon. Since weapon swaps are already going to be allowed in ashes, I think that wouldn't be a problem. Again, if you want to give feedback, uh, leave a comment below. 
Uh, this is also going to bring us to the problem of blocking with a shield or blocking with a weapon. All the conversations I had on the Discord, this was the really big one. Uh, tanks are saying that if everybody can block with their weapon, it sort of takes away from tanking. Um, I think it's okay if we allow people to block with a weapon. We're just going to modify the rules a little bit. This also removes the need for uh, Intrepid to develop an active parry. Uh, this would be one mechanic you'd use the rule set for both. The difference between blocking with a shield and blocking with a weapon. Uh, if you block with a shield, then the last hit would absorb 100% of the attack. So um, if a shield had one hit point remaining, it would be able to absorb a, a 9,999 uh, damage attack. But as previously stated, this would put the shield on a very long cooldown because even if this was a tower shield with 5,000 hit points and it just absorbed a massive attack, that shield is going to be on a very penalized cooldown. Uh, the tank's probably not going to be able to get back the tank back up uh, into tank stance anytime soon. The difference here is the weapon the last hit would bleed through, meaning it would block only what's left on the hit point pool of the weapon. So if the weapon only had one hit point left on its blocking ability, it would block one and it would pass through 9998 following if you played Magic the Gathering following the trample rules. With that said, uh, how do you blend this with a passive block? Um, you simply Anytime you're not actively blocking, you're going to be using an RNG chance. Uh, shield could have a basic block rate of 25%. Uh, for tanks, you would give a tank, uh, if it's a tank primary, an extra 15% block chance. Uh, if it was a tank secondary, you would give it a 5% block chance. This just create something that being say cleric plus tank gives you of course these numbers can be moved around for balance if you think a base block chance of 25 percent is too high easily changeable uh you could start lower but give the tank and the tank plus higher bumps uh and this means the passive block can happen regardless of active or not obviously if we went with the 100 percent damage reduction from the front you wouldn't then have a passive block because you would have reduced the damage down to zero and again like all good blocking blocking should be frontal arc only i think everybody agrees that you should be able to evade attacks from behind but if there's passive block and passive parry you should only be able to do those from the frontal arc so if we look at those numbers a little bit differently now, we say shield's going to have a basic block rate percent chance of 15. We're going to give the tank a 25% block chance, uh, thus bringing it back up to that 40. We just make it so tanks block better. Now, I know what people are going to say if we do that and we give the tank secondary 15% block. You're going to say, well, now not every class can use every weapon. And that's wrong. Every class can still use the shield. It's just some weapons benefit some archetypes in some classes better. So the eight tank primary and then the eight tank secondary or the actually the seven tank secondaries, they get a shield advantage and there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody else can still use a shield. They just have a lower chance to block. Uh, with this, weapons would have no passive block chance. If we felt it necessary, weapons would have a basic parry, or maybe we don't do parry at all. Maybe we say, you know, uh, we're just going to have active and passive block, and then we're going to have uh, evasion, and then we might have dodges. We don't know what direction they're going with that yet. Maybe we have um, dodges, or maybe we have um, kits for mobility. Um, there's lots of different ways to do that. There's going to be a lot of information coming out in the next couple of months about Ashes of Creation and all their combat stuff stances all their combat decisions so follow the channel if you want to know when i put out stuff that they talk about combat wise if you like the music today remember to check out pgn music that's my record label all the music you hear on my shows twitch and youtube that's all dmca free you can tell your fellow content creators or your favorite content creator uh, there's free jazz orchestra music tavern music all sorts of good stuff Remember, I stream uh, three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. If you want to talk more about this, swing by my show. The link is in the description below, and we can talk about that or any other questions you have. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to put this in post. You guys take care. Remember, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I'll see you next time.